It was another kind of slow trading week, but we did catch a nice short trade on the USDJPY from the daily market breakdown videos. Let's get into this week's forecast. Something significant has happened here on the weekly chart of the DXY. If you look, if you really, really zoom in, this low has been removed, which has given us finally a weekly trend to the downside. We have had nothing but sideways action on the weekly chart of the dollar for so long. So yes, we have seen a very nice sell-off in the DXY. It could feel like you are chasing price if you continue to short, but honestly, I think it's a solid idea to continue to look for shorts now that we have a very clear weekly downtrend uh, on the DXY. My, I would say one of my first targets probably is about $99, 99 on the DXY. We have a nice little rally base rally demand zone here. We have a clear area of support right here at about 100. So I, I personally think we will push down here. I'm not saying, look, I'm not, I'm absolutely not saying that we will just absolutely just tank to 100 or to 99 again. Um, but I do think that is where we are going in the next couple weeks, maybe the next couple months. Uh, doesn't mean we will, we won't pull back like this and then get a rally. No, I actually think, you know, since this up here is also kind of a support area trap with that low, I think we will probably break this, maybe react off this one, get some sort of move, something like this. So it could take a few months or maybe a few weeks, depends on you know the price action. That's basically impossible to predict, but I do see us heading down to that uh, weekly demand zone. And then from there, I think we actually will probably get a nicer, bigger reaction off of it, maybe something like this. Obviously, it's very difficult to predict. We'll have to discuss it when it comes there. So make sure to sub sub make sure to subscribe to the channel so you get all my updates. But I just want to say this is the higher time perspective. A significant thing has happened here where we have a weekly trend now. So things are looking really, really weak. As far as the daily chart goes, we have beautiful trends to the downside. The, the question was, will we be pulling up to this daily supply? And I mean, based off this move to the downside, it does not look like we are going to be pulling up to that daily supply. If you look at the four hour time frame here, we have a pretty much a picture perfect uh, four hour downward trend line at this point from all the way up here is where I have the trend line connected. If you can see, you can see we are clearly kind of getting away from the trend line where we are kind of selling off. It was it would have been nice to get a, a pull back up to the trend line, keep it consistent. So I just want to say it is possible we do start to kind of fill in the gap, uh, the space between the trend line and current price. Uh, but ultimately, as long as this trend line is holding, I personally think we should be continuing to look for shorts on the DXY, especially since, like I said, that weekly trend has now been formed. Yes, if you go back to the weekly chart, it is overall kind of just going sideways. However, since we've broken that low, it's definitely very significant, but be careful. When we break the low of price, a lot of times you'll see a fake to the upside, which is what I think we will get at this resistance, or sorry, the support area, and then eventually fall back down to the 99 area again. So um, long-term bearish on the dollar, uh, short term, definitely bearish to a little bit bullish uh, for sure. But ultimately, we want to be watching the four hour and the one hour downward trend lines to see if those continue to hold. On to the Euro US dollar forecast, just like the opposite of the DXY, we have higher highs being formed. Beautiful weekly trend. Again, we would like to see a break above this high as well to really indicate strength. But just want to also point out that we have a beautiful weekly trend to the upside. Last week, we did get a daily trend form, so that was significant. We almost pulled back down to this daily demand. But look, things are looking up, definitely longs all the way. We are reacting off of some sort of uh, rally base drop supply from back here. So I think we could maybe see, you know, maybe a little bit of a sell off. And where I think we could pull back into if we do start to sell off, looking at a one hour chart here, we actually have an updated trend line that I need to draw right now. So I'll draw it for you guys as I record this. So we have a beautiful one hour trend line to the upside. If we do start to sell off off of that daily supply, I think it's plausible we pull all the way back down to 111 and then react off that one hour demand to the upside. That's what I think could happen. If not, let's say we just continue to push up. We break this one hour supply. We, we break above 1.21. Boom, we get that move. Any one hour demand zone there, we could also look for longs. Basically what I'm saying is it's longs all the way. This arrow here, as you can see, it indicates a one hour uptrend, which means five minute time frame longs are fine as long as this trend line is continuing up. And as always, if we do pull back down on this one hour demand, you could look for confirmation on a five minute time frame uh, as well. We will be discussing what confirmation here is in a little bit on the USDJPY, but uh, for now, we're not going to get into it, but you could also be looking, like I said, for confirmation down there. 
It is also possible, if you look at the four hour time frame, again, beautiful four hour uptrend. If we start to see four hour supply zones removed, leaving us with four hour demand, perfect. We could look for longs off of that. I also think it's very possible that we do get a pullback all the way down to the 1.05 area, down to this four hour demand zone. It's a beautiful rally base, rally demand zone with nice tight basing, nice move away. We've gotten a, we've gone a far away from that zone. And if we, like I said, if we do start to react off the daily supply above, this is another area where I could see us pulling back all the way back into breaking through the one hour zone, but that's fine. We have a lot of backstop zones to look for longs at on the Euro as we continue to push up. And again, four hour trend line to the upside. As long as this trend line is holding, 15 minute time frame longs are gonna be good here as well. So it's really longs all the way on all four time frames. It's a rare time looking at the Euro, my four chart layout, weekly trend, daily trend, four hour trend, one hour trend. So any time frame you're on, it's longs all the way. Usually I will point out both longs and short uh, setups, but in this instance, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything but looking for longs is the right thing to do. And if you are enjoying this video so far, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. All ad revenue donated generated from these weekly forex forecast videos is donated to my local hospice charity so every like every subscribe and every share helps on to the forecast for gold beautiful weekly trend to the upside no evidence to suggest we will be pulling back down to the weekly demand i really hope we do but it doesn't really look like we are so look it's longs all the way here on gold it's another one of those where we have trends on the higher time frames Pointing to the upside, we had a daily supply zone removal. Well, first of all, we had a kind of a sideways range here where supply was being respected, demand was being respected, and then all of a sudden, boom, beautiful move up. We got a nice little drop base rally demand zone here on the daily chart. We almost hit it when it's that close. If I just zoom in for you guys here, when it's this close to being hit, we can pretty much call it hit and uh, continue to look for long. So that's what we were doing in the uh, private Discord group. We pointed out that the, daily, that the daily demand was pretty much being hit. We pointed out that the week that the weekly and the daily trend was up. So we wanted to look for longs. And what were we looking for? Well, at the time I said that, we had a one hour downward trend and we wanted to see this trend line removed for confirmation. And we got just that. If you look here, we had a we had the trend line being respected and all of a sudden, boom, a nice push up. We had the zone being respected as we stayed away from it. And then we got a beautiful wick pullback, basically zero drawdown into the zone. And now we are looking to at least target 2523. So if you are long, this would be our nearest short term target. I think it's a nice little rally base drop supply up here. It is also a potential uh, support and resistance trap area you can see here. So I think it's definitely an area of interest. I think we will react off of this zone. Do I think we're going to go back down to the weekly demand zone? Absolutely not. I just think it's a decent area that we could see a move off of. So that would be our, our, our short term target. Our long term target would obviously be to the highs, to the all time highs again. And if you don't know what to do when targeting all time highs, it's simple. Let's just say your stop loss is here. Let's say we push up here. We create some sort of demand here. Perfect. Then we move our stop loss up to here. New demand formed here. We just continue to move our stop loss up. But this is our short term target again at 25.23. And then once we break this supply, if we do, then we can start to move our, 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 our long term target to the upside. Um, and you can always split it up positions. You can do 20, you can target the all time highs with like 25% of your position, take 75% off here because look, it's, it's, it's a good zone. I like the support area trap as well. It's definitely an area we could see maybe even a deeper pullback to. And if we do get a deeper, uh, so again, if you are bearish, right? Let's say you're a bearish on gold, which I'm not. I actually don't mind looking for a quick little scalp off of that one hour time frame if you are bearish, but that's the only uh, time I would be looking for shorts. I personally think it's longs all the way. Unfortunately, this zone has already been hit. So what that means is with a one hour demand zone in control with profit margin up to 25, 23, you could be looking for longs on a five minute time frame because the one hour demand zone is in control. And then I would, again, I'd look to take profit at that one hour supply zone. If you end up shorting down to there, if we do get a move down, what I think we could see potentially is a move back down to this four hour demand, a beautiful rally based rally at 2466. So if we do pull back, this is where I think we could pause and then continue up. This is a four hour demand zone inside of that daily demand zone as well. So it's definitely very powerful. And that would be our short target if you are bearish. 
And again, I would personally be looking for longs down at that demand zone. I think it's fantastic. If we continue to break up to the upside, any four hour demand zone there is gonna be good. And the trend line is holding. So 15 minute time frame longs are also good. Um, kind of the, the to summarize again, it's, it's longs all the way here, guys, with the weekly and the, and the daily trend to the upside. We just have to be a little bit cautious around that one hour supply zone and uh, look to target it as well. But ultimately, I think we're probably going to all time highs again on gold. That's my prediction based off of the trends. So it's longs all the way. On to the forecast for the USD JPY. Just a reminder, we had a beautiful weekly trend. This trend the past couple of weeks was removed and we are seeing nothing but bearishness here. It is possible we do pull back to this daily supply, this weekly supply and react. But honestly, I'm seeing no evidence of that so far as even this, this last week, it's been nothing but red. And we actually caught a beautiful trade. Let me show you guys what this trade looked like. This is a typical confirmation model you guys are definitely gonna wanna see. We had a drop base drop, daily supplies on here. We waited for price to pull back into this daily supply. And as it was in control, what that means is since the momentum is down and it's a beautiful drop base drop daily supply zone, we definitely wanted to be looking for shorts. So on the one hour chart, we were on the one hour chart, we had a demand zone here. This demand zone was a good demand zone. It removed a proven supply zone. This is the chain analysis that I do. And then over here, we had a supply zone here that was removed, that removed that demand. It was a beautiful drop base drop supply. And we simply shorted the pullback and waited for price to at least hit the, the low of price here. And we got easily a three to one, four to one uh, trade before price ended up kind of pulling back here. But ultimately the trade is still running. And this is a trade that we called out in the daily market breakdown video. If you guys want access to these daily market breakdown videos where we also have video lessons, Discord group, Sunday Zoom sessions, join the diamond membership on my patreon or wap links in the description down below like i said video lessons sunday zoom sessions sunday forecast daily forecast my daily chart analysis it's a good bang for your buck it's not too expensive uh, again links in the description down below we also have lifetime access available if you do not want to pay the monthly fee if you want to trade catch trades like this and learn how to take confirmation trades like this again hit that uh, subscribe button in the in the link down below to the WAP or to the Patreon membership. You can also join on YouTube. Anyways, the one hour trend is continuing. So unfortunately, I don't have any one hour supply zones to show you because this one has already worked out. So as long as this downward trend line is holding and being respected, you could be looking for five minute time frame shorts. At this time, I'm not seeing any four hour or one hour zones that are fresh that we could look to short. So we have to resort to day trading only on that five minute time frame. That's it. That's why I do the forecast throughout the week because I only do these weekly forex forecasts once a week on Fridays and Saturdays. So I can't, you know, call these trades out for you guys on YouTube. That's why I have the paid group. It's well worth it. But uh, yeah, the yen looking weak. I would definitely stick to day trading shorts on a five minute, even a one minute time frame as well. I don't really recommend people trade a one minute time frame. But when we have such a strong one hour downtrend, uh, momentum being broken and momentum down on the daily chart. I, I personally think looking for shorts is going to be the best bet here on the USD JPY. On to the forecast for the British pound. In the comments down below, let me know your thoughts on the pound and I will let you guys know mine right now. On the weekly chart, we are currently breaking this weekly area of supply, which means we are going to have a weekly man zone down below, which means it is possible we do pull back down to this weekly zone and then react off it to the upside. Why do I think we will react off of it to the upside? Well, because it removed a supply zone. Not only was it supply, it was proven supply. And what I mean by proven supply is that we already got a reaction off of it, which proved to us that there was supply there. And look at the second reaction we got off of it as well before it ended up breaking. So not only did it break a proven supply, it is also with an overall weekly trend. So that is another positive sign. And we wanna be looking for pullbacks. And the thing about if we do get a pullback like this, on the lower time frames, all the lower time frame traders, all they're gonna see is this, right? Where it's like, oh my God, we gotta be trading with that that trend. And really the trend is up on the higher time frame. This is why multiple time frame analysis is key, and that's what I teach my students as well. So pullbacks down to this weekly zone would definitely be good. I think it's definitely possible. But obviously, with massive green candles like this, there's no evidence of that taking place just yet. So even on the daily chart here, no evidence whatsoever of that taking place. We do have a daily demand zone down below. It's decent. We are gonna have a new demand zone here for them. We just need to wait a couple more days. So there's not much to point out in the daily chart other than 
the fact that we have nice trends to the upside on the four hour time frame we have beautiful trends to the upside it is kind of getting away from us though a little bit so i, th I am expecting you know some sort of pullback but as long as this trend line is being respected 15 minute time frame longs are going to be good looking at the four hour chart here now since price is getting a little bit away from us i am expecting a pullback and if you want i, I don't mind the pullback long entry down at 1.31 on the one hour chart it's a beautiful rally based rally demand that not only removed one but two but three areas of supply if we get a deeper pullback that's okay we have a one hour demand zone down at the 1.3 area we could look for longs off of like that now like i said it's possible we do pull back down to that weekly demand zone that i was pointing out if we do I wouldn't suggest looking for shorts all the way down to that weekly demand until we can get something like this, or maybe we remove demand, we have a nice uh, one hour downtrend, then at that point, okay, shorts might be fine. But in the meantime, we have beautiful trends to the upside on the one hour chart, on the four hour chart, so it's pullbacks to the upside, to, uh, uh, it's pullbacks to demand all the way, right? It's another one of those ones where you have a weekly, daily, four hour, one hour trend. All four time frames are trending. So whatever time frame you are trending, it's longs all the way. Hopefully you guys don't mind these one hour zones I pointed out. I think they're half decent to continue to trade with that overall trend to the upside. And like I said, if we start to get a one hour downtrend, then at that point we need to be a little bit more cautious and say, hey, maybe we're getting a pullback down a weekly demand and maybe we need to hold off. But in the meantime, it's definitely longs 100%. On to the forecast for the USD CAD, my home country. Are there any other Canadians in here? Let me know. We have a weekly chart here that is showing us absolutely nothing. What it is showing us is that we have what I like to call sideways soup. There's nothing to go off of on the weekly. And on the daily chart, there's absolutely nothing to go off of either. Now we did actually get a break of this upward trend line with this daily supply at 1.37. If we do get a pullback up to that, I think it's a decent area to look for a potential swing trade short. We are into a demand zone now, but look at how tested this demand zone was. It was tested over 75% of the way in. So it's definitely not an area of interest for me to look for longs. We have to be cautious of it, but it's definitely not too concerning for me to look for shorts. Now on the four hour time frame, we do have I would say more momentum than trend, but we're going to call it a trend. We have a supply zone above up here. It's not bad. Uh, it it could be used as a pullback entry to the to the uh, downside. What I don't like about it is that this it's rated right this low. It's really obvious, but. Look, it's not a bad zone to look for pullbacks to the downside off of that supply zone. And even the one hour supply here that I'm going to point out to you guys in a second, it's not bad either. I don't mind that for shorts at 1.357. And obviously, since the trend is down, if you're a day trader, as long as this downward trend line is being respected, the five minute time frame, 15 minute time frame shorts are going to be good. So really, it, I do prefer day trading this one only where if you compare this to the euro or the pound, um, we also have a good four hour and one hour zones to, to trade off of because of the daily and the weekly trends. We don't have a weekly or a daily trend on here. So what makes you know looking for shorts straight up off of a one hour or a four hour zone a little less higher odds so that's why if you're going to be trading the four hour or the one hour chart i definitely definitely 100 percent more prefer the pound or the euro over the usd cab but look if you want to look for shorts off these zones i think it's fine uh, especially if you want to look for like confirmation on day trading time frames or just look for day trading shorts so the usd cad i would definitely prefer uh definitely shorts right because we're shorting the dollar um but you know, I would definitely prefer to be doing that on a day trading time frame only. Alrighty, on to the forecast for the AUD USD. This is definitely one that's not as uh, looking good as like the pound or the euro. And here's why. On the weekly chart, we have a lot of sideways price action. Yes, momentum is certainly up. I will not deny that. But there's really no weekly trend here and there's not even a daily trend. However, if we do break above this high, which is I mean, it's even possible we still have another hour left. It's definitely possible we do break above the side. We might have actually have done it. Let me see. Let me zoom in. No, not yet. If you look, we barely, we're so close to breaking that high. And then we will have a daily trend. If we do have that daily trend, it'll be looking great. And we could definitely, uh, it definitely increases the odds of trades working out to the long side. Any pullbacks down to daily demand at 0.663 are also going to be good. Again, no evidence to suggest we will be getting that pullback. Um, so really looking to see if we can get that daily trend. That'll definitely increase the odds you know, of trades working out. I would say we do have a four hour and a one hour trend to the upside. As far as zones go, there's not a lot of zones. We actually have a, a one hour zone that was just formed here. It's not great. Um, 
it's not bad either it is a rally based rally demand i don't like how we barely moved away from it but look this is our nearest time frame or our nearest zone that we could look for longs off of at 0 0.678 i wouldn't feel too comfortable with just a a, a um, an entry a stop and a take profit above this might be one where it's best to look for five minute time frame confirmation on the lower time frames as we come off that demand zone if we actually break this demand zone, that's fine. We do have a backstop demand at the one hour chart at 0 0.673. We could see a move off of like that. And then at any point, since we have our trend lines all the way over here, there's tons of room. We could be looking for longs in a five minute time frame. Let's say we start to trend down on the five minute time frame like this. And then all of a sudden, boom, we get a break of that downward trend line. Any five minute demand zone there could be used as a potential trade because of the overall trend. So as long as that trend line is being respected on the Aussie, I think it's longs all the way. Um, if we can get the, the the daily trend of the upside, it definitely just increases the odds of these one hour zones working out. But in the meantime, I'd probably stick to day trading uh, only and, and basically only be looking for confirmation inside those zones on a five minute time frame. On to the USD CHF, nothing but weakness here in the weekly chart. We did have a couple, I wouldn't really say bullish weeks, but definitely somewhat green weeks. And now we are pushing back down. Uh, we do have a weekly supply above that we could push up to, but again, no evidence to suggest we will be doing that. We have uh, daily trends of the downside, daily supply zones being respected. In my opinion, it shorts all the way. We do not have a four hour downtrend until we can break this low. So I don't love this, but I don't mind what I'm seeing over on the one hour chart, which is a pretty nice uh, one hour downward trend at this point. Not the best trend I've ever seen, but it is a, a one hour downtrend, definitely. I don't think anybody would say this is an uptrend or sideways. Um, so if we do get a pullback, we also have a, a rally base drop supply zone at 0 0.852. So if we do get a pullback up to this one hour supply, it could definitely be used for a potential swing trade to the downside. And as always, guys, if you don't feel comfortable just shorting it, you could always look for the day trading shorts using a confirmation entry model like I pointed out on the USEJPY. So again, a nice little rally base drop supply. That could be our pullback entry to the downside to continue to trade with this overall momentum um, to the downside there on the US, on the USD Swiss. Um, if we do start to break the lows um, on the four hour chart, that's great. Then we could add 15 minute time frame shorts. But in the meantime, since we only have a one hour downtrend, I think it's it's five minute time frame shorts as long as this trend line is being respected. Um, so even if we do push off the supply, boom, we could still be looking for shorts, uh, you know, on a five minute time frame. So it's really shorts all the way. Um, we don't have a weekly trend, but that's fine. We have a daily trend, looking to get a one hour, a four hour trend. But again, it's shorts all the way here on the Swiss. Last but not least, we are on to crude oil. We are getting a move off of this daily demand zone. I'm a little surprised because we, it, we've seen a reaction off of it once. If you guys have been following my forecast from a while ago, we got a beautiful trade off that daily demand zone. And we came back in for a second test, third test. We are reacting to the upside. So, I mean, oil's looking strong. I would definitely say oil's looking strong. I mean, we do have a four hour demand zone down here that's technically a confirmation. What I don't like about it is the fact that the Again, this is a four hour demand zone confirmation coming off of the daily demand. That sounds good, but when we take into consideration that the daily demand is tested, it becomes lower odds. But it is a, a confirmation at 74.65. We could see a move off of that four hour zone. I think it's not bad. Again, since it's low odds, I would suggest looking for lower time frame confirmation day trades inside of that zone rather than just looking for you know a, a, a long trade um, on the one hour time frame here. You can clearly see we broke the de the, the downward trend line. Any pullback down to this one hour demand zone at 73.81 could also be good. Not amazing, but it's not bad. What I would prefer to see is really evidence to suggest we are really, really going up, which could look something like this, where we remove that supply zone, give a nice one hour trend line. Then we could add day trading longs as long as the trend line is being respected into our trading plan as well. We don't have that. We just have momentum. I would like to see a nice pullback and a nice looking trend. However, if we do break this supply zone like that, any one hour demands on there, okay, we could look for longs off of like that, which would in theory be better than this one down here, just based on it proving that we are really going up rather than getting a pullback. That's what I would like to see. And as always, if you are bearish, which I mean, I don't really hate the idea of being bearish on oil right now uh, based on kind of the daily chart and the fact that the daily demand is very tested we do have a rally base drop uh, one hour supply zone here like i pointed out at 76.49 
that would really be our only area to look for shorts. I'm not saying it's amazing, but it is really the only area I would look for shorts off of to potentially get a trade all the way down to like the 74 areas again. So it's a nice little one hour supply. It could definitely be used for shorts. Um, since the weekly chart is, is sideways and the daily chart is down, I think it's not a bad idea to look for potential shorts. That's why I'm pointing out both sides here on crude oil. If you guys want to watch the full length forecast with all the other markets, Make sure to subscribe to the channel membership to get access.